and, and we got to be willing to actually challenge black leadership to do more and then say, I need to see receipts as well. Right. But see, here's the problem. <laughs> we got six damn days. OK. <laughs> I'm sitting here asking everybody, first of all, I'm assuming that every one of y'all in here has either already voted or you done set up the situation for you to go vote. Well, just ask him, how many of y'all have already voted? Raise your hand. All right. All right. So how many of y'all uh, have set up the situation to vote on Tuesday? Okay, so then the next thing is, before we go to all the churches, how many of us in here got an 18 year old who ain't never voted before that is a is a target to 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 get out to vote? How, because right now, honestly, well, I, I can't get in no discussions with somebody who's going to take more than five minutes of my time to be trying to convince you to do this. I'm trying to drag people out who going to vote for Kamala Harris. And we only got six days. And every one of us in here needs to identify a Kamala Harris vote and get that Kamala Harris vote to the polls. Because if I'm taking somebody to the polls who's talking about I'm decided, I'm dropping their ass off at the curb. No, I'm serious, because I ain't got no time. I ain't got no time for that. No, I'm serious. We ain't got no time for that, Roland. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So this, this is no longer about the conventional, let's have a discussion. This is about, I need to take your butt to the polls to vote for Kamala Harris. You're not voting for her? Keep your ass at home. Because, no, sir, I'm, right. I'm dead That's right. serious. That's right. And, and this is the level we're at. The, the part of this conversation we could have had six months ago, we can have that conversation now. This, this is all about IDing a Kamala Harris voter and getting that voter to a poll. This is what this is about. And, and we all got to get serious about it. And I want to tell y'all something. I want to end this. Y'all will love our kids, man, over there at HFCA. When you, when you, when you see what these young people did today, they stood in line. They went to DMV, stood there to get their Wisconsin ID. Wait, you know how it is at the DMV. People, you know, the, some of the people behind the desk, you know, they ain't the most pleasant people in the world. But I'm just telling our students, don't worry about that. What we need right now is this piece of paper that allows me to take you over to the library or on 60th and Capitol so you can register and vote. I'm saying to all, each one of us need to think in our Rolodex, our mind. That's right. Who is it that I know will vote for Kamala Harris if I get them to the polls and we got to get them to the polls to vote. And, and, and I know again, and, and, and I'll, I'll stop here. Real. I, I know that there's a lot of things that black people don't do. Right. But I want you all to be proud of the black people, people with canes standing in line for an hour to vote. Y'all got to start feeling that because I think there's something going on up underneath all of these polls, uh -huh. up under all of this, because there's a there's a group of black people out here that's larger than y'all think that's hearing the message. We just got to press that message hard for the next six days. You feel me? We can't get down on ourselves. This is the time to get up on ourselves. This is the time to talk about what we're going to do. This is the time to say we owe it to the people who died in the Mississippi Freedom Summer. We owe it to Fannie Lou Hamer. We owe it to them. We owe it to Polly Williams. We owe it to Val Phillips. We owe it to all these people. And more important, we owe it to ourselves to vote at this moment in history. And we can do this. We can do this. Lloyd, when you were talking about the 408, 80. then you said two. I was doing the math. That's literally 5% of Biden's margin of victory in 2021. Just your group. If those 480 grab two, let's just say they go to 1,000, his margin was 20,000. And those, and those two is left, that's right. 
And see, that's that, and so I, people always they always say, man, you, you gotta stop. My wife was like, you gotta stop. You gotta stop saying it's simple. But actually, it is simple. It is. I think we complicate this because <laughs> we want to try to reach a thousand. No, no, no. That's how I was saying. I just need you to touch one, two, three, four, five. Exactly. You do what you do. The other folks do what they do. All of a sudden, that's your margin of victory. I just took ten people to the polls who voted who weren't eighteen the last time. There's, a, I'm telling y'all, a lot of Trump, I, look, man, a lot of Trump voters died. You know, that, you know what I'm saying? Between, between, between 20, 20, no, I'm serious. And now, there's a whole new group of, of young people who, who were not eligible to vote four years ago that are now eligible and they are persuadable Kamala Harris voters. You, you, you feel what I'm saying? And, and, and so, for example, I was thinking today, I, I wish I had gone to every high school. They wouldn't let me. Y'all know they wouldn't let me at every high school. <laughs> Y'all know, <laughs> Y'all know that. But I'm just thinking about the number of us who, if you, who are teachers, ex-teachers, who could go back and talk to the people at the school that you were in to say, hey, can you get your 18-year-olds uh, out to vote. Just think of, just, we got to start thinking about every single vote matters, right? Every single vote. And I'm telling you, black people, we can do this, man. We got to, we got to have courage. This is the, this is the moment we can do this. Go ahead. There's another element to that too. And I know we were talking earlier about the uh, various women who have run nations and we get this, these adverse comments from our own women and men regarding uh, Kamala. But I grew up in a two-family household. Daddy went to work, mama ran the household. Mm-hmm. A woman can run it. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, another thing that we need to do that we, we could probably take advantage of, we're, most of us in here are older. Most of us in here probably have grandchildren. But if we make sure that we talk to our children and make sure our children are voting and make sure our children are making sure our grandchildren are voting, we are creating the numbers that we need for the margins. A lot of time it's easy to say, whoa, it's me and I'm tired, like Dr. Fuller said. But you don't need to be tired for six days. It doesn't make sense. The question is clear. You got two avenues that you're going to go down. You go down the one with Lucifer, and you don't try and fight it, it's on you. But you need to stand up for what's going to be best for you, us, our family, our children, our grandchildren, and their future. This is what we try. This is what some of these gentlemen in this room are doing now. A lot of people in this room work with these younger men. Mm -hmm. They haven't given up on them. And what we try and do is pass it along. It was always passed along, the Creole, you know. But we have to be accountable. We all have to make sure we touch somebody, make a difference. If, if, you don't, if you're by yourself, you got one vote. If you got eight people in your family, you got eight votes. It's simple. That's right. But we have to press that now. Well, ain't nobody in my family can even come to Sunday dinner. Uh, unless they voted, uh, that, I, 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 look, I heard about your family. Well, we, that's right. We 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 believe in cut everybody off. <laughs> hey hey hey, you ain't walking in the house yeah. if you don't. I I had a woman. She said um, she said that uh, her son told her she wasn't going he wasn't gonna vote. I was like, did he finish the sentence? <laughs> I, I said that would have been a real problem in my household in term in terms of your members. Um, uh, are you seeing the gen- are you seeing what he just talked about the generational focus of, of not just saying well you go do your own thing like no you come in with me because I was in when I was in North Carolina it was awesome to see these young boys and young girls who literally <coughs> going oh, to the park with their parents yeah two things I do want to uh, uh, remix my last answer about the church all right <laughs> because I don't want to understate the significant work of souls to the polls and that's really what I wanted to say so I was thinking about the churches and our vans and we may not organize our vans as well as we should 
with Soul Soul the leadership of Pastor Greg Lewis. Is that only early voting, or is that going to continue? No, it's based throughout. They do it all. As a matter of fact, 414 742 1060 is for riots to the polls. Hold on, repeat that. Hold on. 414 riots to the polls. Early voting and on Tuesday. And on Tuesday. 414 742 1060 for riots to the polls. Right. It's been early voting. It's been campaigns. We've had buses going from churches to the early voting site. So I just want to remix that answer. And then um, at Progressive, where, where I pastor, we have a voter engagement team that we've had one for years. It's 10 people. We engage across all the generations. So we're talking about voting every Sunday. We've had voter registration inside the church, voter education, taking people to the polls. So we try to be a 100 percent voting congregation at Progressive. The, the folks are real serious there about getting the vote out. That's that's not a an issue for us at all. Same question. Are you seeing that generational uh, connection in your church? Like most churches, uh my membership, uh, the, the median age is probably 50. It's older. So you do have the uh, commitment to vote. Uh, we don't have, uh, unfortunately, but it's common, uh, a lot of young people. But even those who are there, we make sure that voting is a top priority, not just in a national vote, but even in the regular uh, local elections. Well, I think that the point that Howard made and all of you have made is that we have to understand it's six days. It, the next six days will determine the next four years. Exactly. And we're talking about literally billions of dollars. Yeah. We're talking about public policy. We're talking about every facet of our lives. Health, mental, physical, entrepreneurship. We're talking, I mean, you name it, that's what we're talking about. And so this whole idea, I love all these people who keep saying, oh, I need government out of my life. I keep telling people that doesn't even exist. Government is in every facet of our lives, whether we want it or not, uh, and it, you might as well accept that reality and say, I gotta be a part of this whole thing. Uh, and, and, and I cannot overstate to the folks uh, who are not here, who are watching, uh, you may have, you may know folk who are in Milwaukee, know folks who are in Wisconsin. This is one of the seven states that are gonna decide this, okay? We already know how electoral college works. It will be decided by North Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada. And there's nothing worse for me than folks saying on November 6th, man, I should have done this, when you could have done all of that uh, leading up to the election. And so this is the moment, the opportunity for every single one of us, and, I, and I, I'm gonna keep saying it, uh, as long as I have breath in my body. Black people, if we vote our numbers, we will win. Not even a debate, but we have to vote our number. And so as Howard said, talk to them, grab them, uh, don't spend your, you know what, y'all can ignore any housewives show, any reality show. I know y'all want to talk about the games. First of all, the NBA just started. The college football playoff ain't until uh, December. So you could put all that, the NFL playoffs won't start until December. You could put all that on the back burner. We should be have a late, we should have a laser like focus on this election because, again, today's decision in Virginia, Supreme Court allowed Virginia, they, allow, they completely ignored the law and allowed them to resume uh, purging folk from the rolls. They say they're purging non citizens, but the six conservatives allow them to do so, and there are actual citizens who they actually purge. That's real. This is that right wing Supreme Court. The president appoints Supreme Court justices. The Senate confirms or rejects it. Whoever controls the White House in the Senate literally controls the federal bench for lifetime appointments. That means, and I, I keep saying this here, Trump appointed a 35-year-old white woman to the federal bench. If that white woman served as long as Ruth Bader Ginsburg does, did, that woman, her position will not become available until 2065. That's one federal judge. And so we got to understand, these decisions will impact after a lot of us are gone. That's why what happens in this election is critically important. So Trump ain't sh Did you know that Trump wanted the military to actually shoot Black Lives Matter protesters? I mean... Trump is not sh You let people die during COVID and then told us to drink bleach. 
He tried to kill the stimulus bill and couldn't, so he delayed the money just so he could put his name on the check. Trump ain't shit. He used a death penalty to execute black men like Brandon Bernard. He f***ed Obama's economy, lost thousands of black jobs, he started inflation, and gave his billionaire buddies a tax cut. America, Trump, Trump ain't sh so Don't vote for that man, nothing but Vote Kamala Harris for president. In this style, we've seen our share of hard times, heard our share of big promises. Up to 13,000 jobs. But empty promises don't build cities. Plans never materialize. We do, with grit, sweat, and cold beer. So when he talks Former President Trump called Milwaukee a horrible city. We know talk is all he's got, and this is what we've got.